All right, Joey Strubeer, Bike Man Performance. Today we're going to do a technical video on how to use your PowerVision CX or your PowerVision 3. Uh, your CX may look like a, a Dynojet version or the Bike Man version. Uh, you'll notice on the Bike Man version, if we power it up, you'll see a splash screen. It says Bike Man on it. Uh, a regular one will just say DinoJet PowerVision CX and this is a PowerVision 3 here. So now we're going to go into what to do when you get this device and you actually are one of the people that want to make changes to it and go in and, and uh, use the full function of this and not just use the preset uh, programming. So let's go to uh, our computer here. Uh, this is my monitor. It's a pretty big monitor but we're just going to use a small portion of it. So uh, first thing you have to do is open up your Windows uh, Internet or Apple Internet or whatever you have. And what we're going to do is we're going to type in uh, flash your Polaris.com. And that will take you to the DinoJet website here. And from here, you want to go to uh, support, and then we'll scroll down to downloads. And whether you have a, a PowerVision CX or PowerVision 3, uh, for some reason they have their all their uh, uh, C3 software in the PowerVision CX. So go to this PowerVision CX tab right here, and right at top here, PowerCore Software Suite. Uh, we want to click download that and that will be a, a program download like any other one uh, so click that download that and what that will do is that will put the uh, PowerCore software on your computer and that will give you an icon like uh, this this guy right here uh, see if you can see it uh, this little PowerCore it might look pretty small on my screen, but uh, that's it right there. Uh, it's a little triangle, and I can kind of go in and show you here a little bit closer. If you can see that or not, I don't know. But uh, so when you click on that icon, it'll bring up this screen here. Uh, from there, we want to click this one on the left. Uh, power core and I'll shrink this down so we can see it there we go and the uh, it'll perform a backup on your power vision device that you have plugged in at the time uh, as soon as you plug in your device uh, you can see here uh, this device is plugged in and it'll bring up usually a thing of files like so if you have logs uh, most likely if you haven't done anything else with it but you performed an ECM read you'll have a file like this here uh, that says uh, letters and numbers with dot SDK afterwards that is your stock file that is the file that it read from your device or from your uh, ECU in your in your razor or uh, vehicle that you're programming. If you have a can am you're gonna have to uh, use this file here. Uh, be, you'll find a PV info, PV info dot text. You'll have to upload that to the DinoJet site and they'll email you or you can download your your stock file. But say we already have our stock file on the device. Oh, and we just want to look at stuff and make changes so we want to go to the upper left here see if you can follow my mouse the upper left right here says open go down to power vision and go to your stock file we're just going to go to this one for now and what it'll probably say when you first open up your tune is uh, 
uh, no definition file found. Would you like to download definition? You want to click yes, and then it'll figure out where to lay everything out. So now it's uh, a little bit more simple. We're going to get a little bit closer here because you'll be able to see better. So now on the left here we have uh, Tune Info. Uh, our first first tab. This is our, well. Let's go into Tune Info here. So this is where you can set a password. Uh, you can look at you know all the information about the tune and whatnot. Uh, and the next thing here we have uh, mass flow through the throttle body. Uh, you know if some vehicles are different, but this is. Uh, calculated air going through the throttle body at RPM and, and throttle percentage. Uh, the, the main areas that you want to make changes for uh, changing your, your AFR output is in the main target AFR. So if, if you, you can make changes to your speed density here and it will make changes as well. So it's the, this one here. Uh, this is your speed density. So this is calculated airflow RPM versus boost pressure. This is a turbo model. Uh, but the, the most simple and most efficient way, so it's not going to screw up any of the running characteristics of your machine if you want to make changes, is in the AFR value. So say you're at 9000 RPM at different load percentages here. If you're naturally aspirated, it'll go up to about 100 uh, for a load. And if you're turbocharged, obviously it's gonna go past that. But if you wanna make changes, you can highlight a certain area. And if you wanna go up uh, a certain amount, you can hit page up and it'll make changes to that whole square area. Now, if you wanna do a bigger area, you can highlight a bigger area. And if you go up on the AFR, it's gonna make it leaner. If you go down on the AFR, like so, it's going to get richer. So that is the easiest way to make changes to your uh, AFR output is actually in your AFR table. If you want to make changes to your timing, uh, the best place, there's a lot, of, a lot of different timing options here. It can get kind of confusing, but uh, when it's all said and done, this timing one primary will have the most effect on your uh, timing output. So say at wide open you want to take away a little bit of timing at full boost on this one or if you're uh, full full uh, demand on a nationally aspirated you can make changes here and you can go page up to go up uh, one one value so it's going from 28 and a half uh, to 29.25 and you'll realize pretty quick that on this you can't make less than three quarters of a degree change in timing. You can type in a different value like say here this 28.5 we can write uh, 28 or 28.3 but it's going to automatically change it back to 28.5 because 28.5 is the closest. So uh, this is your timing if you want to see it in three dimension you can slide this up and you can rotate this around. Uh, it's not the best uh, graphics for for looking at your timing, but they may change that and make it better. But as of right now, uh, this is the graphics. You can change the graphics as well under uh, under view up here. Uh, but I don't personally like their their graphing on their stuff. But the PowerCore software is pretty good. Uh, the bigger the monitor you have, the better off you're going to be. Uh, that's why I have a uh, 4K monitor that's extremely big, but uh, that's another another day, another story. If you want to make changes to your RPM and uh, rev and speed limits, so you go to this rev and speed limit tab. Uh, this is where you'll find your, your vehicle speed limits. And uh, you find your seatbelt limits in here. So if you want to turn off your seatbelt limits, uh, click this over uh, and that will disable your, your seatbelt safety limits. Uh, we recommend keeping those. 
just because you shouldn't be going fast without a seat belt. The only time you want to turn those off is if you have uh, four or five point harnesses and you're uh, religious on, on putting those on. Uh, you can change the seat belt limit so uh, you can say you can make that 20 or 10 or, or whatever. You can also uh, change uh, your rev limit by temp. So say uh, your rev limit, you want to uh, not have a, a cold motor rev limit, which is a bad idea. You do want to maintain that uh, cold motor rev limit. It protects your motor from uh, scuffing and, and conditions where the piston could expand faster than uh, the cylinder, causing uh, scuffing scoring. Uh, there's also a rev limit by gear. Uh, so it tells you right on the in the table notes here what each gear is. So high is number one, low is number two, uh, neutral is number six, and reverse is number seven. So this is a speed limit rev limit. So if you're going less than 10 miles an hour, it won't let you go over uh, 3550. And the main reason for that is uh, for belt slippage. So if the belt starts slipping, it doesn't run away. Now, if you're in a race application, you want to get the most you can down. So this high for sure, uh, you know, you change that to 8.0, which would be 8,000. Or uh, you could make it, you know, 9.0 equals 9,000 because it's nine times 1,000 gives you your rev limit. And if you're a, a, a mudder or a rock crawler and you want to have full power and low gear, uh, you would change your uh, values. Oh, sorry, two was low gear. Uh, well, number one is high gear. So if we want to have low and high gear, be 9,000 anywhere through the mix, uh, we'd put that up to there. Uh, there's also an ultimate rev limit uh, that's found under the rev limit tab. So if you put your rev limit by gear up to 9,000, but this is still 8,800, uh, your max rev limit will still be 8,800. So if you want to make 9,000, you'd put this up to 9.0 as well. We have uh, max vehicle speed for two foot. So that is if you are driving uh, two footed like some racers do, uh, and you're sitting there for more than so many seconds, if you're over 10 miles an hour power braking, it's going to go into a limp mode. If you're a racer, you don't want that. So you're going to put this up to 120 miles an hour, well up and out of the way. Uh, you can have a max RPM for two foot. You're going to want to put that up and above where you'd ever get to if you're a racer. But uh, if you have somebody that uh, you don't know driving it and you don't want them power braking it, it's a good idea to leave that one in place. Limp mode RPM. Uh, this is what RPM it'll drop back to when it hits limp mode. Uh, it's good to keep that limp mode RPM low because if you have an issue, you don't want to be revving that engine up in a, in a place where you can cause even more damage. Uh, let's see what else we got in here that you would want to know. Uh, so we have system, down here in system. If you have full exhaust, you're going to want to change this up to a higher number because this is what is going to set you into a, a low limp mode. So turn just hit 255, it'll max that value out and you want to do that for the base 2 and 3. Uh, torque limits, uh, this is uh, limits that will set you back and hold you back. Now on any ECU, it's really important that if you're in here making changes, you know what you're doing. Uh, if you do not know what you're doing, you can cause a vast amount of damage. So if you say, I want to go in here and make changes, know that you're accepting responsibility for any damage that happens. And if you get a tune from somebody, make sure that you're getting a tune from somebody that knows what they're doing within these values. Because anybody can make changes and say they make valid tunes, but to actually know what you're doing and, and make tunes that are a good idea and uh, matter when you're, when you're out driving, 
it's good to have a reputable company and a company that goes through the, the development and testing. Uh, we don't just make changes at a whim. Uh, we make changes on the dyno and I'll uh, bring you out and show you our, our dyno setup here. So that's uh, in a nutshell. Oh, so once you're done, let's get finish this first. Uh, so say you made a bunch of changes and you want to save it. You want to click save as and then uh, make, you know, like a test, you know, I'm just going to write test one so I don't uh, confuse this with any other ones. But once you hit test one, it'll make a, a new file with all your stuff. And once you load this file into your machine, uh, then you'll have all the active uh, displays on your device so it shows all your uh, uh, data on your screen. So like on this one here, like the engine temp and, and, uh, map value, throttle position, and all that, it'll, it'll come up after you flash your device. Until your device is flashed by the PowerVision, it will not come up. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, how to use the PowerCore software. It's pretty easy, uh, and, it, and it's, it's, it's real user-friendly, but on the same note, if you don't know what you're doing, uh, don't go in here and make changes because you can, you can destroy a perfectly good motor uh, really quick, and uh, there's a bunch of safety limits in here that, that you don't want to be messing with unless you know what you're doing. Uh, but if you know what you're doing, uh, go for it. This is a, a quick tutorial on how to do it. Now here is you know, what we have hooked up to an engine while we're dynoing, just so you know the depth that we go. So uh, we monitor knock. We have a knock sensor on the engine. We have uh, EGT sensors in the in the turbo. We have temp sensors in the manifold. We have temp sensors in the charge tube. Uh, we monitor boost pressure uh, before and after uh, the intercooler and throttle plate. Uh, we measure air temperature before it gets there. We measure the amount of airflow going in. Uh, we measure actual AFR coming out and. Uh, you know, a lot goes into testing these engines more than just making changes. We always make changes on the engine dyno before uh, we put it in a rig and test it on the wheel dyno. We have a wheel dyno behind us here, uh, but that's uh, in a nutshell how we make changes. So uh, thanks for tuning in and go check out all our sweet products at bikemanperformance.com.